Hi guys, so um, I wanted to make another video about uh, getting my CDL and uh, I actually wanted to make one like a couple weeks ago, like on my last week of uh, school, but then I was like, let me just wait until I get my test date and do the test and stuff because I'll have more to talk about. So, um, so yeah, so here I am. Uh, so this means that I, I have done my test and um, whatever. I, I didn't complete the whole thing. I just ran out of time, but I did pass the air brakes, um, pre-trip and maneuvers. So yeah, I just ran out of time, so I didn't get to go out on the road. But uh, I don't know, in, before I continue with this video, um, just so everybody knows, I'm in Massachusetts. Uh, there might be different laws or uh, like the test format or like what's required and whatever. It might be different where you are, so just keep that in mind. Uh, whatever I say, it might not be like where you are. And even uh, even like with the tests, different, you know, different troopers, like here it's a state cop that does the tests. So um, we, we call them troopers here. I, I don't know about other places, but um, yeah, so that could, it could even depend on, on who's doing the test for you. So, um, so yeah, so uh, let me just talk about my last week or two at school um so yeah my last two weeks i mean nothing really changed you know we were still practicing maneuvers and um and uh air brakes and pre-trip uh they did do like an evaluation just to make sure that you could pass everything um in order to book you for the test because if they don't feel you're ready they're not gonna book you a test until you know until you're until you're good basically uh so uh, yeah, so I, I did good on that. The only thing, my, my alley doc, um, it, cause here in Massachusetts, I don't know other places, but, um, they, you do the, the three maneuvers in the test, the straight back, an offset, and then the, whoever's doing the testing has a choice to do, uh, one of the parallel parks, the blind side or the side side, or alley doc. So... Uh, so yeah, so we, we did the alley dock in the evaluation because that's the most common one that they, they have you do. Uh, so yeah, so <laughs> I, I was really having a lot of issues with alley dock when I was learning. Um, you know, I, I wasn't running over cones and stuff, but I just, I just couldn't get the angle right and, and, you know, make the corrections fast enough. Um, sorry, I don't know if you hear my dog. She's like sneezing or something over there. Um, so, yeah, so I, I was really having some issues with my alley dock. Um, but when I did the evaluation, I did get it in the box, but I had to do six pull-ups. But the instructor said that, you know, like the trooper or whoever's doing the test, he's going to be lenient on that last maneuver as long as like the other ones that you did were good. Because you actually have 12 points for the maneuvers for like all put together um so you know as long as you're doing it safely usually they'll be lenient about it because usually you only have two pull-ups and two get outs for all the maneuvers except for straight back you just have one pull up and one get out so uh now what was i gonna say oh so yeah so i i did six pull-ups in my evaluation but they were like you know we'll we'll just let you go because the the trooper will probably, you know, be okay with it. So, um, then the next day, the next day, I don't know. It's like I woke up an alley doc professional or something. Cause then I was just putting it in the box with, with, with no problem. And it was even at the point that I was a little concerned. I was like, you know, am I, am I actually getting it? Or is this just like luck, <laughs> you know? Um, so it, it turns out that I, I actually did finally get it. Um, I think, my, like, my issue was, like, making the correction. Because with all, like, when you're going for the test, you know, the schools aren't there to teach you the real-world scenarios and how to do stuff in the real world, whatever. They're there to teach you how to pass the test, you know. So the maneuvers are set up with, like, points, you know, like um, like steps and how to do them. And with all the other maneuvers, you know, you have like a guide to kind of follow as you're you know maneuvering but with the alley dock you pretty much just do that initial uh like the initial turn and then straighten yourself out after you get your your angle and then you pretty much just have to like 
you know, play with it to get it into the box. And there's not really anything to follow from there. It's you just you just have to get used to the like where the tires are and where the like where you want the trailer to go and whatever. Anybody that's done Alley Dock knows what I'm talking about. But anyway, um so <laughs> so um okay now what was I saying? Okay, yeah, so I it's like I woke up an Alley Dock professional. Like all all the other times like <laughs> I I would be in the truck for like almost like a half an hour. Well it probably wasn't a half an hour, but it sure felt like one. And then all of a sudden I was just doing it in like, you know, a few minutes. Not, e- not even like, it, it was, I don't know. It, w- it was just weird. So if you're having issues with Alley Dock, like your entire course, don't give up. Like, it's going to be all right. You're, you're going to get it. The, um, my, my issue, like, I, w- I think, I don't know if I already said it, but um, it was just getting that used to making the corrections fast enough basically because for most of the time I knew and and the instructors knew that I knew what I was trying to do I just wasn't doing it fast enough and yeah so um yeah so that that's what happened in my my last week so then I felt a lot better once I started getting the alley dock then I felt a lot better about the test like especially the maneuvers part um because that was mostly what I was concerned about like um, but I wasn't, <laughs> my, my first test, I, I was not even thinking about maneuvers. Like I, I just, my, my one goal was to get through the air brakes and pre-trip because again, I don't know about in other States, but here in Massachusetts, at least around here, uh, where I am, 80% of people fail the air brakes on the first try. So my one goal yesterday when I went to my test was to pass the air brakes and pre-trip more so I was worried about the air brakes because it's not it's not that it's difficult it's that there's so much room for error um that you know that's another thing is I was looking at like air brake tests for some other states I don't remember which one specifically but it seemed like their tests were for one shorter and it was just it was it just wasn't so long like there, there wasn't as much like space for 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 error and um another thing that was interesting was that a lot of um a lot of people that were from other states uh they like that i knew um they kept telling me like oh just make sure you know your pre-trip good whatever blah 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 and uh i never heard anybody say that around here like they're like no air brakes like you have to get 100 on your air brakes the pre-trip you could get 80. It, once you get 80, they'll actually stop you. They'll, they'll stop you. Well, I guess, I guess it depends on the trooper. But a, a lot of them will just stop you and and continue because, you know, they're, they're trying to save time, you know. So, um, so yeah, 80 is passing for the pre-trip. And then um, 100, you, you have to get 100 on air brakes. So, um, that was my number one goal yesterday. But I got through that stuff very easily. And then I moved on to the maneuvers and then I got through that as well. And I just ran out of time so I couldn't go out to the road. But I wanted to share also, oh my God, I'm already at, <laughs> I'm already at nine minutes. Um, I wanted to share how I like prepared to pass my air brakes and my pre-trip uh, apart from, you know, what we did in, in school. Because on Fridays we would go out, that's what we would practice was... Um, was the air brakes and pre-trip like we didn't do any maneuvers that day and we didn't drive out on the road or nothing so um yeah so uh me and another guy we usually studied together um on the yard uh so you know we we got used to criticizing each other or whatever but we actually did it as if like as if we were at our test so if anything was wrong or because because on the test if something is wrong like like you have to say it if, if, if the, um, like, like in the beginning, like when you, when you want to get 85 to 100 within 45 seconds, even if it goes over 45 seconds, you want to let them know, yeah, it took 55 seconds or whatever. So anyway, um, that's what we did, you know? Yeah. Um, but apart from that at home, uh, well, first of all, the school, uh, and probably most schools, they gave a, 
paper, like with the, um, like all the information, everything that you need to say from the air brakes to the pre-trip and even the in cab was in there and the in cab that that's mad easy. Um, so they gave that to us and I, um, like I made flashcards, uh, just like, you know, just flashcards. I put the name of the part on one side and then whatever it was that I have to say. So like, this is shock secure, no leaks. And then I just went through that. I don't know, few days or something. And once I got you, like, once I got, I had an actual visual of everything in the truck. Like once we got to know the truck and the trailer, um, like visually, then what I started doing was I mentally, like I would close my eyes and I would mentally walk through everything and I would record myself on my phone. Like, like I, I went back and listened to it maybe the first three days or something just to see and um just followed along with the paper i did it for the 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 air brakes as well so anything like that i missed or whatever then i would remember for the next time and then i would try it again and, and i just kept doing that so then once i got used to saying things in like a rhythmic way <laughs> is is that a word rhythmic or is it rhythmatic i don't know anyway uh i had a rhythm right so I just wanted to get used to saying these things. Like once, basically once I started with the, with the radiator secure, no leaks, like everything was able to, like, I would just, I would just say everything else, like off the top of my head and same with the air brakes. Like once, once I started, then I pretty much just went in a nice flow. And, uh, another thing, one of the instructors at the school, he also made a website that actually has pictures of the um like the in, like under the hood the, the the entire thing uh so and then it has like little labels like the the name and like what you have to say for it and if you're if you're in massachusetts like this this will help you so like it's like it's like 20 dollars i think and um and i got that because you know i i didn't know if i was always going to be able to look at the because we usually test in a Freightliner, but there is a chance that you might be in a different truck at my school. Um, so, which is actually what happened with me. <laughs> so it's good to know like how to identify these things or whatever. But anyway, on the website there, it is a Freightliner that, um, that he used in the pictures. So I would also look at that sometimes too. Um, cause, cause I wasn't messing around. I just went ahead and bought it when, when he told me about it. Um, I'll put the link to that in the, in the description here. Um, so you can check that out if, especially if you're in Massachusetts, because in some other States for like the pre-trip, I know they look for different words or also like he has also the air brakes on that website too. Um, like with the pictures and, and the maneuvers are also on there. Um, those help me a lot, um, to get used to like the steps and the maneuvers. Um, and then I think that's about it really. Um, like how I prepared for that. And I, I, I really wasn't too nervous um, when I went for the test, especially after I got through the air brakes and the pre-trip, like the pre-trip the pre -trip was, was nothing. I mean, that was, yeah. Um, but the air brakes, you know, because I, like, I really wanted to get through that. Um, you know, it was a little bit, a little bit nervy, but not, not too much. Not like some people. Um, I don't think anybody could tell that I was nervous though. So, um, but yeah, once I got to the maneuvers, it was pretty much, all, it was the same thing as like in school, like pretty much on your turn, you get into the truck and a lot of times all the other people are over there just talking to each other so they're not really watching what you're doing sometimes sometimes they're but i was pretty much just in my flow in my in my test and that all worked out good so um so yeah i i don't know i guess my my future plan for this uh well first of all i gotta <laughs> i gotta finish getting my license i gotta go back and get the uh 
get the um the road test done which which if, if i would have gone out on the road i would have passed anyway they the instructors and stuff already know that but the um you know i ran out of time so um yeah i should be getting my road test like within the next like week or two maybe um and then after that i'm really not sure uh like where i'm gonna work yet or what um i have a ton of options out there um so i'm just gonna take it one step at a time kind of how i did my my air brake test because because i like seriously like when i'm when i went there like i wasn't even thinking about the the way that they wrote it on this paper from the school it's like in three separate columns right like i was not even thinking about this column yet like i i was still up here <laughs> and and once i got that step done that that step done then i started going to the next step and the next step and the because if I were to be thinking about the entire thing, then I would have just been a fucking mess. So, yeah, but, uh, yeah, so I'm going to keep you guys updated. Today's actually my last, last day of school because the, the two weeks after the graduation, you still can go back and, like, practice maneuvers and stuff because usually, usually after you graduate, it takes about that time to go and get tested, so they want you to still practice, whatever. But I already passed, so I'm not really, that, like, you know, whatever. But I, I really enjoyed my school, though. Like, I, I really enjoyed um like i don't know going there <laughs> so um but uh yeah I, I i liked all the people that were um you know in my class and instructors and stuff so uh yeah so i don't know i'll keep you guys updated uh with any kind of updates that i have um but that's that's about it Oh, you know what? I just remembered uh, remembered another thing that at, while I was in school, uh, you know, I would hear like the different reasons that people failed for um for their uh tests, and I kept like a little log of it. I think actually, uh, yeah. Um, so I made like a little list of the things that wouldn't be something that would come to my mind that somebody would fail for um and i just like wrote it down um so then uh there was another thing that happened in my evaluation actually when i went to do my evaluation for my um air brakes the chalk block was stuck so um you know i i asked if i could move it in and i was about to move the truck but i didn't have my seatbelt on and see you don't have to have your seatbelt on for maneuvers but you do have to have it on when you move the truck when you're doing the air brakes. And I knew that part for like when you're testing the um, the parking brakes and the service brakes. But I did not know that I would have to do it if I was just simply moving the truck like an inch for the air brakes. And I'm so glad that that happened in my evaluation because it actually happened in my actual test where the chalk block was stuck. And I did have to ask the trooper if I could move the, uh, the, uh, the truck in order to take the chalk block out. And of course he was like, absolutely. But, but the first thing I did when I got back into the truck to move it was put my seatbelt on. Um, and I don't think I would have done that if that didn't happen in my evaluation. So, so glad that that happened. Um, what I actually started after I did my evaluation, what I started doing anytime that I went to do the, the air brakes, then, um, in the last column, like I, I would just come back in from taking the chalk blocks out and I would put my seatbelt on right away um so yeah so that's about it um and yeah so i'll, I'll talk to you guys later